What's up, Rankers? Oh, sorry, I'm doing an impression for those of you who knew who that was. Um, so, what's up, uh, everybody? This is Russ. I'm with RWGResearch.com. Now, as you know, I'm trying to build a plasma popper, um, noble gas engine device. Sent out the uh, little uh, money order and haven't really heard any information, so I thought I'll give them a call. So, I called it uh, Intelligentries, the people, and uh, called this. Uh, group and Sandy answered their website there's Sandy so she answered she said she's got it and they said probably 10 days after the conference it's been uh, what about 12 11 days something like that right now so um, it looks like they said they have it maybe another week they said they're working on it maybe they got more orders than they thought I don't know anyway I'm enjoying my Chicago style deep dish. Actually, it's not even a Chicago style. It is a Chicago deep dish. Back to the work here. Um, all right, so Tin Man's been doing some pretty cool stuff on designing an engine that could be used with a popper type of motor. If you haven't seen it, it's on the thread um, right here at open-source-energy.org. Um, or I'll link it on this description of this video. So really quickly, I wanted to give you an idea of what I was thinking that you could do. Um, and then I'm going to show you a little video clip from the original PAP engine um, documentation that we have on video of something very interesting. Now, I told Tin Man about something I thought of, and this is kind of the idea. Basically, you have, and this could be done in different ways. This is just what I randomly thought of real quickly. But this is basically a, an encapsulated cylinder. All right, the whole thing is closed. The center here is where all your electrodes are, and you've got two pistons that move that are being held in place with springs all right, on both sides. Those pistons are pretty much a solid neodymium magnet of some sort, okay? And then on the outside of that, you have coils wrapped, all right? And every time you ignite this, the two pistons move in and out like this. And the reason I did two is so that they move together. Um, you have to do some mechanical balancing to get those to stay with each other. But the reason I built it like this was I didn't want to be like a paint shanker, you know, and do this. Um, <clears throat> and it's sealed. So once you get the gases in there, they may leak to the other side, but they're going to balance out. So you could fill the whole capsule with the same amount of pressure of gas and you'll never lose any. That's the reason I did it this way is because it's encapsulated 100%. You can't lose any out of, uh, out of the uh, outside. So that was just an idea. But this is it, okay? Here's the thing about this. In this video, I'm going to show you really quickly. Um, basically, this device might be a nuclear device. Um, that's stated in uh, John Rohner's, I'm sorry, that's stated in Bob, Bob Rohner's uh, demonstration at the Tesla Tech by a gentleman who has evaluated it, studied it, whatever. Um, if that's the case, you get a totally different reaction than you would normally. And you can see right there that any nuclear power plant powers itself think about it so nuclear is just totally different field but if it's such a small minute amount of nuclear and there's no real radiation and it's usable energy whatever but listen all right and think about this Right, he's got a bank of resistors. These things are like this tall. They're probably a hundred watt, maybe a piece. They're about this tall, big ceramic things. Keep listening. And, and the reason for the resistors is I create so much energy here that I have to get rid of most of it. Basically, I create somewhere around a thousand volts with about uh, six hundred plus amperage. All right. So if that's true. You've got 600 kilowatt of power out of these three coils that are around these cylinders that basically surround this plasma effect. So you're getting whatever EMF or magnetic radiation that comes off the plasma that you're using to move a piston. Why not make this device solid state in the fact that you have a cylinder that's closed and you ignite the plasma and you have coils stacked around it? Usable energy, right? If it's nuclear, I can see that being very plausible. Um, so, just something to think about. Now, he says 1,000 volts, 600 amps. That's, a, that's 600 kilowatt. 
Well, let's just say he's getting 10 volt at 600 amps. Well, that's 6 kilowatt. I mean, even if it's not as much as he states, which that sounds like a lot, you would have to have some serious cables coming off thing to, ha to handle that many amps. But if it's this quick, you know, if it's real quick, you, you, the spike might not be, be big enough. And I, I can't tell what kind of cables he's got coming off this. So just a thought, just something to think about. But uh, basically, I'm just waiting for uh, these things to come back. Now, over at the forums on the thread that this is actually posted on, the uh, Bob Rohner actually posted some stuff there, and hopefully he comes back. I know there was some situation there where it might have upset him. I didn't, but some people in the forum might have upset him. That's what happens, I guess. People get upset, and uh, it is what it is right now. But nonetheless, he posted some stuff over there, and uh, you know, after watching his stuff, um, it's kind of confusing because I tried to ask Bob to explain it to me. You know, you've got Bob and uh, John Rohner, and then you got Tom Rohner who passed away. And uh, this was like a year or two ago, I believe. So rest in peace, Tom. Uh, but anyway, I'm not really sure the whole scenario there, but basically they're doing separate things. And uh, the Intelligentry website, um, I haven't really found any real um, videos showing that they're, you know, actually doing anything. Uh, physically running, I guess. I know obviously they're doing a lot. Excuse me, but they're... <laughs> it's the pizza. But I haven't really seen anything running. So, Bob has a whole bunch of stuff on his website. And, um, his website is ronermachine.com. It's in the it's in the thread if you go look it up. He's got a whole bunch of videos over there of him actually running a test setup. And at the Tesla Tech conference, he took this thing apart, put it back together, and, you know, injected the noble gases and, and, you know, ran it over and over and over and over in front of a live audience. There's also a couple more demonstrations of him doing that. So, the story between what's all going on with those guys, I don't know, but it, it doesn't really matter because here's what matters the most. You can physically see something going on and working, okay, that Bob has posted. That's what matters the most. Now, the big difference between the two is in the Intelligentry group, basically state that they don't have any radioactive material going on, okay? But their electrode is made out of something very particular, and I forgot what it's called, and that's okay. I forgot what it's called, but anyway, it has a radioactive side to it. So even though Intelligentry says they don't use those things, the center electrode they're using is a... Yeah, I'd have to go look it up. Um, yeah... I'm not going to be able to find it right now. But anyway, basically, it has an isotope if it's reactive of a certain radioactive material. So, I don't know about this, but um, we'll see. Uh, but they, the, the Intelligentry group supposedly use a radio frequency to excite the gas, where the original PAP engine and what Bob Runner is doing is got uh, thorium and rhodium and red phosphorus in these little capsules. They're encapsulated, but they're reactive to the gases and help the process. So, a lot of information learned lately. I appreciate uh, Bob coming over to the forums. I hope he comes back. I hope we didn't scare him off. Um, other than that, there's your update. Uh, working on getting quotes for the gas. I've been uh, trying to get quotes. So one guy's haven't been responding. I got some good, uh, good information today, and hopefully tomorrow I'll have a quote. Gases are very expensive. Um, we got a helium shortage right now in, the, in America probably the world, and however true that is, I don't know, but uh, you've seen that in the news a while back. So basically, some of these guys are telling me they won't even sell me helium. That's a bad deal. But if I get one cylinder of helium, it should last for a really, really long time, because uh, what Pat did, and what Rohner, uh, Bob Rohner was doing, and maybe the other guys, I don't know, they actually are using syringes, and uh, little things you see on vials where you can stick the needle through pull the stuff out of it. It's like that, except they're using it to transport the gases. So, um, instead of mixing and mixing manifold in some complex system, if you're just putting some in a little bitty cylinder, then you can set up your your uh, cylinders to just extract the gas, however many cc's, and enter it back into the vacuumed cylinder that you're going to be using for the popper device. Okay? So, that kind of takes away the difficult way of how I'm going to mix the gases. I'm going to mix them with syringes. And if I take 10 cc's of one and 20 cc's of the other and 30 cc's of the other, I know exactly what I have in there to do my testing. 
Um, I am gonna, I would like, and probably, I'm going to get a bottle of premixed gases that what they're calling for. Um, all that information you can find on there um, in my last video too about this. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick update, my thoughts on it, and uh, I'm going to finish eating my pizza. So Jim, the beginning was for you. Everyone else, see. You. Thanks uh, for your support, as always, and uh, continue uh, sharing information. Do what you can. Peace and love you all. Have a good day. See you.